be Welcome to part one of making your own clothes or making your own clothing line, fashion line, whatever you want to call it. In this uh, first video, we're going to be tie-dyeing some clothes. So uh, the materials that you're going to need are a tie-dye kit, clothes that you want to tie-dye, the rubber bands, which will probably come in the tie-dye kit, uh, the ink or the, the dye that's going to be used to dye the shirts, uh, access to a pretty decently sized workspace with uh, running water so you could wash the shirts out afterwards. You're going to want as many plastic bags, uh, as, as, as many shirts as you have as plastic bags, and probably multiply that by two. So for every shirt, you're going to want to have two plastic bags, and then um, if you want washable markers too to do certain designs. Some more materials for the tie-dye you're going to need is you're going to need some sodium carbonate, which I'm going to show you how to make in this part. So you're taking sodium bicarbonate, turning it into sodium carbonate. Who cares? It's called soda ash. You could buy it at the store. Um, usually pool stores will, ha will have it. But essentially what you're going to do is be taking baking soda and turning that into what you're going to actually need, which is soda ash. And you're going to be soaking the clothes in soda ash. So I'll tell you about that though. So we'll get to that. We're going to get right into making the soda ash. You want to take some baking soda, put it on the stove, right into a pot, no water. And uh, you're going to be basically uh, cooking it until there's no more bubbles. So you're going to be moving it around with a spoon. Uh, keep going until there's no bubbles coming out of it at all. You're taking sodium bicarbonate and turning it into sodium carbonate. So baking soda into soda ash and also one cup of soda ash is equivalent to one gallon of water. You're going to need the soda ash because you're soaking the shirt so they get a better color from the tie-dye. Uh, don't do what I did, I accidentally poured some of the soda ash into the fire because I was recording. And you just soak it in the soda ash, take it out, uh, make sure that you um, ring it out you know with your hand just ring it out and then you're ready to start making the tie-dye so you're not ready to start actually tie-dyeing the shirt you have to spiral it first or if you're going to do an ice dye or a crinkle dye um, there's a lot of different ways to uh, tie-dye shirts and we obviously just made the sodium carbonate which is soda ash i took it out the soda ash i rang it out with my hands after doing so many of these shirts my hands hurt so bad but um, that's what you have to do. You have to wring it out or let it air dry for like 24 hours after you let it soak in soda ash and then you're ready to do your spiral. So you can see in the video I'm spiraling it around. I think the easiest way to do it is with my hand. I've seen people use forks or pliers and I'm just going around a round table and I'm fixing the little uh, fans as it goes around. And this is going to be what makes your design, the spiral. So I kind of wrap it all up. I take some rubber bands perfectly put the rubber bands around it so it's, it's nice and compacted and we're going to be dying on the on the opposite side that I twisted another important tip is you want to make sure that your shirt is inside out before you do the twisting that I'm doing because you want it to go through the shirt so if, if let's say you mess up the dye a little bit like you squirt it a little bit randomly um, the actual part that you're going to see on the shirt is on the inside so you, you put it inside out before you do the spiral Hope that makes sense. If you're watching me put those rubber bands on, I, it was just really gliding on because I have that sheet underneath it. Before you twist your shirt to actually make the spiral, like I said, you want you want the shirt to be inside out with the tag uh, facing you. So you're going to be touching the side of the shirt that has the tag and the front of the shirt's on the inside. So when you dye it, it has like the perfect fans on the front of the shirt. So the front of the shirt's facing the table. You can kind of see what I'm talking about better here. Uh, I actually placed it down with the back facing me first. I'm not sure why I did that. It's it's not that big of a deal that I did the outer facing me and I did that side first. You just have to make sure when you do the front, which will be the flatter side, since you put that face down on the table, the front, uh, the front of the shirt facing down on the table, you want to make sure that's the better side that you do, the cleaner side. And you want to make sure that both sides are basically near identical you want to make sure it's perfect on both sides so you see here i'm doing blue lines on that outer rim i'm going to do blue lines on the outer rim of the other side too um and if you you know there's no real way to like have a mistake because at the end of the day no two tie-dye shirts are going to be the exact same you obviously want to make sure that if you're making a bunch of tie-dye shirts with the same style or same color you're going to want it to be the same so i flip it over here uh oh actually i was wrong so that is the back side of the shirt as far as I could tell, I'm pretty sure that's the back side. I think it actually is the front side. Okay, well, uh, you can see I'm just doing the the full shirt, like the whole outside of it, you know, with the remaining dye that I have left. I kind of ran out of dye for this one, and I calculated how many bottles I needed for how many shirts I was doing, so I did five of this design, and then for some of the designs I did four. I think I only needed to do um, two of the designs having five and the rest of them four. 
because I had a certain number of shirts. You know, these are things that you have to think about. Obviously, math can be involved. I know people don't want it to be involved. We think that we're not going to use math after school, but no, but I'm just doing the same thing on both sides. That's all I'm doing Um, because I want I want it to go through the shirt where it is on the other side. And the good thing with these grids is that if, let's say, I wanted to lift up that grid and just check underneath it, I could do that. So that's why you need a tub and a grid. Make sure that the ink doesn't uh, just go on the ground or something. You know, you don't want to be doing this on a table. And uh, that's about it for the tie-dye. So I've shown you two steps so far, making the soda ash. Now making the tie-dye, I'll leave two video links in the description that helped me out making soda ash and doing the tie-dye. And right here, like I said earlier, you're gonna need two bags for every single shirt that you do. You don't want it to let it go through that first bag. I'm gonna take the bag here. I'm gonna go over to my tie-dyed shirt and I'm gonna be taking it with the bottom face down. I want the front facing upward. I want the front facing upward because that's the better side of the shirt and I just kind of plop it in there and that's it. You're going to leave this shirt overnight so the dye can set in. Well, here you are guys, you made it to the end of the video and I assume uh, you as well if you're tie dyeing, the best part is uh, getting to see your finished product. So here we take it out the bag, we've let the uh, dye cure overnight. This is the same time at night, the next day, 24 hours. And this is super important, guys. When you take it out the bag, if you only dyed half the shirt because you wanted to do a half spiral or whatever you wanted to do, you want to take the white side of the shirt facing upward. So you're, you're going to be spraying out the dye facing downward. You don't want the dye to go to the white part of the shirt. You want it to, to leave the shirt, and you've got to rinse out that soda ash too. So you want to take the hose and from the white part you want to you know rinse it like I'm doing and then you want to squeeze out as much dye as you can and then just do that over and over till it starts running white or uh, running clear. You want to make sure you see no dye coming out of the shirt. So here we go. I take the rubber bands off and let's see our finished product. This is the best part obviously. Um, and this one was a warm tone. I did warm tones and cool tones. So here's a, a little washing tip too we're going to get to. So there's the final product. It looks pretty good. Obviously, I'm going to show you some finished pictures. So I have a tub with the warm tones, and then I'm going to have the cool tones separately washed as well because you don't want to put them in the same wash. They're going to blend the colors. So right now you guys are going to see that I put them in different washes. And uh, now you guys get to see the finished products of all my tie-dyes. So here you go.